All right, so in our last video, we looked at moving the VTX from the top plate to the back plate. That way we can run our batteries on the top plate and use different sizes if we like. However, that also presents a new problem or a problem that really existed the entire time we just haven't mentioned yet. And that is the USB plug. That thing that is tucked all the way in there facing the wrong direction. I mean, you can get to it. As a matter of fact, I'll get to it right now. Let me, uh, let me get this going here. Boom, chaka laka laka, boom, chaka laka laka. My cat is in the garage and not happy about it. So if you hear lots of mowing, I apologize. So yeah, I mean, we could wiggle this away, back up the back, and then kind of nuzzle it in there. And it's possible, it's not very fun, a little bit more time consuming than you would like. Like I already got it in there, but that's only because I'm used to this now. However, it's a lot easier if we could just plug it in to through the side. So today we're gonna move the FC, get the USB point in the easy direction to plug it in, and then make the adjustments in the GCS to match the settings that we need them at. Now, for me, I'm going to do what I consider one of the more popular combinations, which is the CC3D running the Ronin, Libre Pilot, it's, they're about similar. Um, if this is not specific to your application and you can't figure it out, feel free to join us on either one of the Facebook groups that I'll recommend in the description. Trust me, someone there can help you. It's, it's what they do and it's what they're good at. They half of them owned Racer 250s at some point. So to start off, we are going to take the top plate back off. If you were planning on or have just done the VTX mod and haven't reassembled it yet, feel free to save yourself the time by never putting it back on. All right, when you take off the top plate, there's going to be four carbon fiber spacers in between the top plate and the arms. Make sure you do not lose those. Those are very important and you will not have a good day if they are not present. So don't lose them. All right, now that that is done, this is as simple of a manner of removing those four top nuts or screws, case dependent. Sometimes you might have to actually Hold them from the bottom as well and turning that flight controller so go ahead and get that done and i'm going to time lapse the shit out of this when turning this i actually like to rotate mine clockwise because to rotate it counterclockwise puts the usb port right above that main pdb connector and i just don't prefer that so Clockwise is my preference. All right, now that that's done, let's get our top plate back on. I described this in a previous video, but basically what I like to do is get the front FPV camera into its groove properly, like so, and then hold it from the front and put the top plate in and press that camera down into its slot, like so. Two short screws are the ones that go through the top plate into the front face plate. The longer screws are gonna be the ones for the arms. Now when doing the carbon fiber spacers, what I like to do is set the spacer on the arm to where the holes are lined up. And then take one of the long screws and get it started through the top plate and through the spacer hole. Get it into the arm, but don't tighten it yet. Once you know it's threaded, go ahead and line up the other side of that spacer. 
and then just repeat the process. Once you have that screw into the, the arm threads, go ahead and tighten her down. Don't tighten these too much. It's just a metal, um, it's not bushing. It's a metal insert inside a plastic arm. And if you're not careful, you will break that plastic or the, you will break the metal insert out of the plastic arm, I guess is the best way to put it. And there we go. We now have the USB port turned to the side for easy access. However, when we plug this in, it's going to come up incorrectly in the GCS. Basically, what it's going to think is it's going to think that the left side is the front side. So right there, I'm tilting the quad to the right, but it thinks I'm tilting it back. Hence, you know, tilting it to the left, it thinks it's tilting forward. So basically what we have to do is we have to correct this in the GCS. Now, I spun the SC 90 degrees clockwise. If you were to spin the other way, it would be 90 degrees counterclockwise or negative 90 degrees. That'll be important in just a second. So let's go to configuration. Vehicle, is it vehicle? No, it's not vehicle. Attitude. Yes, there it is. Okay. Yeah, right there where it's at zero, we need that to be at 90. And we will save. Boom. Reload board data just for the hell of it. Oh, high person with notification. And then go back to flight data. Now, this, besides the gentle yaw spinning that we see there, I will correct another time, should actually be correct. And it is. So there you go. 90 degrees if you turn it clockwise, negative 90 degrees if you turn it counterclockwise, and just set that in your GCS and you're good to go. With that, don't forget to enter our February giveaway. If it's past February, feel free to check on the Facebook or anything else for our current monthly giveaway, as well as join our Facebook groups. Um, if you have any questions that need answers, so on and so forth, we are more than happy to help. My name is The Lazy PC. Thanks for watching.